Well, g'day guys, it's Matt here. Welcome to the channel. Um, there's still plenty of action going here at the development block with the dozers, and there's also been a bit of stuff going on sort of behind the scenes a bit um, and then to do with the shed preparation. Um, there's been a new purchase, which is a bit exciting. You probably would have seen from the thumbnail. As you would have seen in previous videos, we've got a new shed uh, going down back here. Now we will update further along when the shed's going up about sizes and dimensions and all of that. Um, but yeah, it's fairly, fairly substantial I'll say. There was two videos, um, shed preparation, there was a part one and a part two. Um, I'll put the links in the description. But yeah, that was when we had the dozers and just leveling this out. Um, and we we're using the rock from just another place on the development block here. Um, we were digging that out with the excavator and using that down as a base um, because we had to lift up here um, yeah by the time we got down to the end there it was a meter and a half or something so um, we had to build that all up and then we actually did find some other rock that was smaller and a bit of a um yeah just quite a nice bit of rock to top dress it um, almost a little bit like gravel so that has gone down really well um, we had a grader come out that had GPS all on it and yeah smoothed it all out and then um, we've got the vibrating roller um, which you can see just next to the silos there just um, so yeah that, that came out and we're, that's been gone over with that so it's really nice and smooth looks like dad's found his new uh, new toy it's um yeah no it does an amazing job it can look pretty rough and and all of that and then you just run over it with this and it because it vibrates and um smooths it out it uh, just packs it all down nice and smooth really so she's um yeah quite quite nice um, i think it's only been over it once where i'm walking here um because of the vibration and that it can actually shatter the rocks if they're sort of like a shaley type rock and um packs them in real tight and um yeah just just works really well but yeah, you can feel it vibrating through the ground. <laughs> I think he's having fun. Well folks, Peter back again, another crisp morning. You would have noticed on previous occasions or way back at the start, we parked the two tinies next to a little dozer. That was the previous owner's one and it's been here ever since and we've decided to buy it off them. It's a little D4H, um, it's got a, a stick rake with it, but we think it'd be really helpful. The boys think it'd be really good for me, so I don't do so much damage when I'm driving the dozer. I can play with it all day and not do any damage. But it sounds a bit rude to me. But it is what I said to my dad too. But anyway, we've got Paul. He's just up here going over it, having a look, see what if anything needs doing to it. Um, the other thing, it'll be really good for the young ones to learn to drive on. And um, that was my main motivation to let them have a go out and learning some skills while they're young like my boys were able to on a little D47U and uh, we have our resident main man here he's sneaking around he's not too cold today the shorts are on how are you Paul? I'm well how are you Pete? Real well thanks 
beautiful day, isn't it? Documentary today. What a cracker, yeah, no, we. Beautiful day, yeah. Paul Aussie's um, Outback Adventures, eh? <laughs> so, you've had a bit of a look around this, mate. I just, I only got out of bed late, so I just got here, but. What do you reckon? What are you seeing? Well, I haven't given a run yet, but it doesn't seem too bad. There's no metal in the final drives. It's just a lot of paste. That final drive all is black on the other side, but there's no no chunky metal or anything. Just so just graphite. Pretty good. Yeah, just yeah, nothing nothing apart from paste really. So yeah. that should be alright. Yeah. Tracks and things look alright. And and like, how do you go working on such a big machine as this? Do you find yourself challenged? Yeah, everything's a challenge. Yeah, yeah. The smaller the tighter they are. It's it's huge, isn't it? It is huge. But I'm impressed with how they made the cab fit. To be honest. Yeah, it's a case yes, cab done... that's been fitted onto a D4H dozer. No, 2290 cab, I think. Yeah, I think they're what about 100 horsepower. Yeah, I'm not 100 percent sure. Thereabouts. That point, that point on the 11s is level with the top of my head, but they're fantastic for doing small jobs. They're nimble, they're nippy, they don't leave big burn marks when you turn, and it's got the twin shank ripper. Done a basically an overall health check on it. Um, we jacked her up, sat her on her haunches there yesterday. It stayed up for six hours without leaking down. Everything's looking good. Final drives. The oil came out nice and clean on one, not so clean on the other, but still okay. We've got a an oil leak in the back of the injector pump here, and. You got an overview to give us, Paul, just on the state of the little, little darling? Seems to be okay, although this oil seal is not making my life any fun at all. Yeah, right. We might have to get the arc welder out, eh? Mmm, it's possible. But, um, all the filters and everything come up good, the specs? Yep. yep. Just an exhaust leak on the manifold. We need to get a new gasket. Otherwise, she's nearly ready to go to work. Really pleased with it. So we'll see how, well, I guess we'll have an update some time down the track. But. So a bit of other stuff that's going on here while all this is going on is with the silos. We've got uh, the electricians are out and they have been wiring up the lights, the fan controller and all of that. So um, I'll put up a bit of drone footage of the finished product there. It's looking really good. As far as the electrical side, that's where the power is over there. So there's a few trenches going to need to be dug. And yeah, then that shed, the old shed on the other side of those silos, is um, we're putting power into that as well and a few lights and things. And then obviously to the little uh, cabin over... There's too much machinery in the road, can't see it. But the little cabin over there. And then obviously there'll be a, a power going to the new shed. So there's a lot of trenching and power going to different places so that'll be good. Well g'day guys we're back at the development block and it is wet. Um, it's just started to rain maybe 15-20 uh, minutes ago um, but everything's pretty skatey and slippery and and wet so uh, we've got a few things to do here um, carrying on with just a few odd jobs with the dozers um, and yeah just getting a few things tidied up so we're here with the D4 though so I think dad talked about earlier about this and what's going on but um, I think it's all good to go now basically it's been serviced uh, checked out it is quite funny to look at because it's similar uh, vintage to the D11s, but it's just everything's just small scale. Um, so it's uh, like the final drives and the track frame and all that. It's virtually the same design. It's just smaller. So it's uh, very, very interesting to look at. I know. So it's just had the first bit of rain go through. Might have been 
oh, three mil or so, two or three mil maybe, and yeah, just drizzle now, but what we're gonna do is, we've got the hoses to put on that tilt um, ram on the Tiny 3. I might have to give him a nudge here. See, so it is just quite, quite slippery when it gets a bit of a slick on it. <laughs> so Phil's just having a bit of a check out of the, the D4. So the D4 is actually basically a bit of a retirement package for dad. So that's, that's gonna be his toy. So there's two reasons. I think he's having a bit of a fiddle, but also because there's a bit of a slope on here, as he's driving along, everything's skidding down and much easier to move the dozer than reposition that. I think it's quite going to do it. We're getting it done. It is messy. Right, hey, I'll try to get these hoses on. Right, hey, well, we got that those hoses back on and all the guards back on. The um GoPro ran out of battery, so you didn't actually get to see the bit that I was doing. Isn't that right, Phil? What's that? The GoPro battery died, so I, I did do some work. It wasn't just you, did, wasn't it? Oh, you did a little bit. <laughs> so we're going to, um, it's just, yeah, it's drizzling, very wet. I've got, got high heels on, nearly slipping over. But we'll come here and have a look at the silos. So just in the last couple of days, we've had the silos all wired up. So it's not a lot to look at, um, but there is a little tablet that goes in on there. You can see the mounts for that, just plugs in. And um, that's got all the, your controls and how you control it and that. So pretty sophisticated. Um, 
and we've got plenty of options for more silos so we'll have we've got two more silos supposedly coming in about 12 months time um so yeah then that this is all sort of ready to we can modify that and wire them up but um yeah this is also um you can control it over cellular so we can monitor it and control all the aeration it should all be automatic but yeah just another option we have um because yeah here at the development block we are about half an hour or so away from the main farm well i think we're just going to be making a mess here if we try and do anything else so i think we're going to head um, back to the main farm or yeah try and find some other stuff to do there it will be nice to uh get some gravel down all over this at some point just sort of got to hold on for the ride Well guys, we're here at the main farm. Um, now there is a bit going on, but you might have to wait till the next video. So uh, just remember to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. We'll catch you in the next one.